Hello and welcome to Learn Data. It's great to have you on this channel. I'm Nilesh, and in this video, we'll look at the implementation of orthogonal matching pursuit. In previous video, we looked at the intuition behind how the algorithm works, and now we'll look at how we can use uh, orthogonal matching pursuit to recover a signal from a noisy measurement. Uh, here in Jupyter Notebook, I've imported three libraries NumPy. Uh, linear model and matplotlib and these are the versions that I'm using now the very first part is we'll create data and this particular today's code is directly from the uh, scikit-learn docs so if you refer to them uh, you'll find the exact same example in there before we create a data set we need to import another library so from sklearn dot data sets import make underscore sparse underscore coded underscore signal and now we'll go ahead and initialize few variables number of components we'll set it to 512 uh, then number of features is equal to 100 number of non-zero coefficients we'll set it to 17 and uh, we are going to use make underscore sparse underscore coded underscore signal uh, method so before we use the method let's look at what the method has so these are the parameters that will pass um, uh, to uh, the method and we have initialized some of those here and it returns three items data dictionary and the code so data is y uh, that is uh, what we saw in the previous uh, video this was referred to as b and then we have the dictionary d which has the atom so each column is called atom and then uh, we have the non-zero items vector which is x so that is the gamma that we discussed in the previous video now let's go ahead and close this out and I'm going to use the same line. So this would be we'll first have the variables y, x, and w here. And then within this, we'll pass in the variables that we have initialized above. So n underscore samples will set it to one. Number of components component components is equal to components is equal to nc and then number of features is equal to nf that's what we have above and then number of non-zero coefficients is equal to n0 and we have random underscore state underscore state is equal to zero so when we run this we can now check the shape so print y dot shape so it's y and then we'll look at the shape of all other uh, variables as well so y we'll look at x and then we have w so x is the dictionary and then w is the parse vector and here um, this should be comma instead of colon and when we run this we get so these are decimals and then this is the dictionary that we have and if we look at the sparse vector the it is sparse as you can see most of them are zero and that's the objective so that's uh, what we are looking for these have to be sparse and if you look at the now the shapes of this so shape of that and then our shape of x and dot shape of this you see that uh, the x and w so this is here we have only 100 uh, rows and 512 columns and the shape of w is uh, 512 so it's a hundred five hundred and long vector so 512 unknowns and we have only 100 equations so this is a underdetermined uh, system of equations 
in the previous video we looked at the other way around which was over determined now the very first uh, part that we'll do is look at the signal that we have so look at the raw signal uh, and we'll go ahead and plot it so plt dot stem and the stem it creates a stem type plot as you'll see and for this we need the index so before we can create the plot we need to uh, create a couple of more items so let's do that here we'll create some noise noise is equal to the 0 0.5 plus np dot random dot random number and this would be the length of y because we need to add the uh, noise to the entire vector so noise is equal to y plus noise so that's the noise we have and we can look at the shape of noise that vector y underscore noise dot shape is equal to y underscore noise dot shape and it's 100 uh, length and after that we'll from the uh, vector w we'll get the indices of all the uh, elements that are non-zero so uh, the easier easiest way to do that is use non-zero so w dot non-zero and that will give us all the indices uh, if you type index so these are the indices that are non-zero uh, another way to look at it is if you create an array np dot array and if you have one zero zero and then you have let's say minus minus two and if you type non-zero for this uh with the parenthesis here we can see the zeroth index and the third index are non-zero and that's what we get right here as well now with that information we can uh create the first plot so here what we are going to do is use idx on the x-axis so idx uh, and zero because that's a tuple as you see then we have w idx those are the numbers that are non-zero and then use underscore line underscore collection is equal to true and we get this nice plot so here we can uh, add the labels as well so plt dot x label and this is the index of non-zero coefficients in w so that's what this is for the sparse vector and then we have y label plt dot y label and this these are the coefficients uh, for w so these are the w coefficients and finally we have the title so let's add a title to this plot title and this is raw parse signal that we just created and y label so that's the plot we have now based on this we can move further and create uh, use the uh, reconstruction using orthogonal matching pursuit so the first part will do noise free reconstruction of the signal so for noise free reconstruction we'll create another variable uh, this is noise free reconstruction is equal to linear underscore model dot orthogonal matching pursuit i'm going to copy this so because we'll be typing it again n underscore non-zero so number of non-zero coefficients uh, we already have initialized that before to 17 that's we'll add here and then uh non-zero no, noise free reconstruction and fr a dot fit this would fit on x and y that we have also created above then we'll look at the coefficients so coefficients of nf nfr is equal to 
nfr.coef so this is same as what we have seen in previous videos uh, idx underscore so we are looking at the index now index of n nfr is equal to coefficients that are non-zero and uh, coef is not defined uh, in this coef underscore nfr okay now we can create the plot so for creating the plot i'll copy these lines of code and add them here and now the changes are going to be for this index we are going to use what we created above underscore nfr and again this would have the zero in front of it uh, because it's a tuple i think so let's check that a underscore nfr yes you see that comma so if you put a zero in front of it you get just the array and then for this y-axis we need the new coefficients that we have so these are the coefficients uh, uh, n coefficients coef nfr so coef underscore nfr and we want only those coefficients that are non-zero so idx underscore nfr and this would be zero and then we have this now for the title this is noise uh, reconstruction of noise free signal so noise free reconstruction signal reconstruction and as you can see this is the plot we have and they both look quite similar because we haven't worked with the noise data yet after this uh, let's now use the reconstruction on the data that has noise in it so noise so this is noisy recon, noise reconstruction noisy data recon, reconstruction and here we have title let's go ahead and copy this entire line of code as well as copy this line of code because we'll be doing the same thing uh, except few changes the y in this case would be noisy because that's our noise that we have labeled here so y underscore noise so that's what we want to label right here and then this is uh, with noise so let's put n there in front of it and this is noise noise oh, why don't you just spell everything noise and this is again noisy and this is again noise and finally we have another noise before we run this code i just want to make one change i just realized the noise data set that we created we have added 0 0.15 and that's going to create a different set of result so what we want to do is multiply this instead so i'm going to change that and have that right there so when we run this we have the same data set with noise now when we go ahead and run this one we should have a plot with the noisy reconstruction as you can see in addition similar to this what we can do is go ahead and create the final plot which uses cross validation and for cross validation all we need to do is add cross validation there and remove uh, sorry add cross validation right here cv and remove this part and when we run the same code without any changes and maybe just add a cv here so we know that's for cross validation run this so that's the plot we have for cross validation and the reason why it looks much different than before is uh, probably because we changed the value for noise when we ran this again so what i'm going to do now is I set a random seed so np.random.seed to zero 
and have that set there now we can go ahead and run these cells again and see this is the output for cross validation and if you are trying to compare the results that we got in this video are not exactly the same as what we had in the previous video for noisy reconstruction and that's probably because we chose a different uh, random values to create the noise i hope in this and previous videos you got an intuition about what orthogonal matching pursuit is and how to implement it using scikit-learn library in python and uh, i hope this also gives you some knowledge to apply this in any other noisy signal data where you want to extract the signal from it and or uh, in other words reconstruct the signal from a noisy data set if you have any comments or suggestions please let me know in the comment section below i hope to see you all in the next video where we continue our discussion on linear models until then please like share and subscribe thank you